So here's my Rev1 Apple II GS. Uh, let's work on its reliability and get it into the 2020s. The Apple II GS was the last of the Apple IIs, um, after which Apple's focus was primarily on the Macintosh. Um, unlike the previous 8-bit Apple IIs, uh, this was a proper 16-bit computer, uh, but it was also fully backwards compatible with previous Apple IIs. Uh, just for reference, the uh, 2GS was produced from 1986 to 1992, and the uh, first Mac was already out in 84. Uh, the GS in Apple 2GS stands for Graphics and Sound, and it's the first computer from Apple with a color graphical user interface. Okay, let's open her up. To remove the cover, what you're going to do is push in on these two levers right here, and that'll release these tabs. Tilt forward and remove. To get a better view, let's remove the power supply. Uh, first, unplug the uh, power supply from the uh, outlet uh, prior to making any changes. Then, unplug the power supply from the motherboard. And it's keyed in only one direction, so uh, you don't have to worry about installing it incorrectly. And as far as removing it, Pull back on this tab and the power supply lifts right on out. We'll be replacing this power supply with a more modern, efficient one. Uh, I do want to call out the fact that uh, all, this whole process has been toolless so far. And after removing the power supply, it reveals the uh, battery and it looks to be intact. Uh, it hasn't exploded or corroded the motherboard. Uh, this holds the uh, settings and the time. Uh, we'll be removing this and using a remote battery holder and a couple of AAA batteries in its place. Here we have the 16-bit 65C816 processor. Uh, different versions of this processors were available up to 14 megahertz. However, the ones in the 2GS run at only 2.8 megahertz. Let's see. And to the left, right here, uh, we have the Mega 2 chip, and this emulates the previous Apple IIs. And this unit has a memory expansion card. Uh, this one is a RAM Pack 4GS by Orange Micro. Uh, I'm not seeing any additional memory chips populated in the banks, so this one most likely has the uh, out-of-the-box 512K. Uh, no worries, we'll be taking care of this later. Moving to the back of the 2GS, uh, there's a bunch of integrated ports. Uh, we have the uh, headphone speaker port, modem, printer, uh, the all-important uh, joystick port, an external floppy drive port, got the uh, video output, composite video out, and here we see the first use of the Apple Desktop Bus or ABD interface. I'm going to replace a few items in the 2GS. Uh, this is not a sponsorship or paid promotion. I did pay for all these items. Um, first, I'm going to replace out the battery with this uh, battery holder, and that's because the factory battery has a tendency of leaking and ruining the motherboard and its components. Then I'm going to replace out the power supply with this Reactive Micro Ultimate Power Supply. Uh, this replacement unit uh, is more efficient and runs cooler than the original one. Uh, what's nice is uh, the Reactive Micro order did come with a uh, anti-static wristband. I do want to call out that uh, there was a uh, loose screw in the unit. It appears to uh, have come off from the uh, main board and the standoff. I'm going to tighten down the screw and button her back up, then continue on with the install. It, it was. I'm actually kind of surprised. It was packed really well with a lot of bubble wrap, uh, foam, and uh, peanuts. So it definitely wasn't the packing. Uh, next, I'm going to replace out the existing memory expansion card for an 8 meg one from Garrett's Workshop. Uh, this unit is based on modern SD RAM and uses less power. Let's start with the battery. Uh, first, take note, uh, the positive is towards the uh, back. 
and I'm gonna use some diagonal cutters to remove the existing batteries. Um, I'm gonna snip them as close to the battery as possible. Now we're gonna slip the connectors onto the legs. Uh, red is positive, black is negative. I did use some zip ties to clean things up a bit and I'm gonna put the battery holder back here uh, away from any important components in the event there is a uh, future battery leak. I'm gonna clean that back area with some 91% isopropyl alcohol, uh, give it time to dry. Okay, I just attached some double sticky tape to the back of the holder. And I'm gonna attach it to the newly cleaned surface. And now I'm just gonna install some fresh AAA batteries. And securing the uh, screw looks to have done the trick. It's uh, not uh, rattling any longer. Um, the sticker does indicate that it's from 2024. Um, I also wanna mention that uh, if you're in it for 100% looks, there are some scratches on the surface. I, I don't know if you could make it out in the video or not, but just something I wanna mention in the event uh, that's important to you. And the power supply is a uh, complete replacement. Uh, so just install the new power supply and uh, plug it into the motherboard. So there are three holes in the power supply to match the three protrusions on the case itself. So insert them in. And then push down, should click into place. Go. And then plug it into the uh, motherboard. Now let's replace out the uh, memory expansion card. Should just need to pull up to remove. And the uh, Garrett's Workshop uh, RAM 2 GS2 card does uh, specify that this side is towards the rear. So let's just insert it. You know, actually I'm gonna install the uh, booty card I had in my Apple IIe. Uh, this will allow me to boot off a of disk images like uh, Total Replay. Uh, I'm gonna install this in slot seven as recommended. And to make the uh, swapping out of USB thumb drives easier, I am using a uh, extension cord. Um, that way I don't need to remove the cover to replace it out. Uh, there's a knot in the line to prevent uh, anyone from pulling uh, everything out. All right, let's reinstall the cover and power it back up. Unfortunately, the uh, original Apple II keyboard no longer worked, so I'm gonna use my Macintosh one. Uh, first thing I wanna do is run a system check. Uh, to run the system check, all you have to do is uh, select Option, Open Apple, and turn the system on.
and this process usually takes a while so I'll fast forward through it. Ah, nice. The system shows as good. All right, let's continue on with the testing. A copy of GSOS version 604 has been copied to this USB thumb drive and the uh, booty card has been set to boot from it. All right, let's power it on. Nice. Looks like it's starting. And also I didn't have a uh, ADB mouse, so what I'm using is my old uh, Macintosh Kensington trackball. Fingers crossed the drivers are in there. Nice, looks like we're in GSOS now. All right, it appears I got really lucky. The uh, trackball does indeed work. All right, let's check out a few things. Let's go into control panel. I do wanna make sure that the uh, additional memory is recognized. All right, let's double click on RAM. Okay, it looks like it is seeing the eight megs of RAM. And let's check the time. And Okay, and as expected, the uh, time is a little bit off. So let's update the time. Okay, and you know, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shut down this system, uh, unplug it, and uh, confirm that the uh, date is still kept. Plug it. All right, so the system has been powered off for a while. The uh, power cable has been plugged back in. Uh, let's power it back on. Alright, let's go back into the control panel and confirm that the uh, time and date is kept. Nice. Time is still there and the uh, date is accurate. Okay. I'm going to continue testing and playing. I'll keep you posted. I've been playing with this Apple II GS for the past couple days and these upgrades have been rock solid. Uh, no issues at all. Yeah, I look forward to playing with this Apple II GS for decades to come. Uh, if you happen to like this particular video, please consider clicking like, 
commenting, and becoming a subscriber. Thank you.